the 251 slash 21 Ausführung D, also known as the drilling, uh, which means triplet, by the way, one, two, three guns, in case you didn't know that. Uh, this was the fourth 251 in the series after Dragon started them in 03. Um, so there was many after it, but this was pretty early on in the series. Uh, this was the first half-track that I bought. I still haven't built a 251 yet. Um, I'm a little intimidated by their size because they can be a little... They're smaller than you'd think they'd be. They look huge, and then when you see them, they're pretty pretty little. So but there's a lot in here as it's from 04. So let's look at what it has. Lots of decals, brass with indicators, uh, brass shells, sticky mirror things, PE for the hoe, which is right there, some soft styrene uniforms, an extra figure set, some DS figures. Here's just some renders of the gun assembly. There's apparently metal flash suppressors. There they're talking about the Easy Link tracks, which are the precursor to Magic tracks. The instruction sheet is pretty standard looking. It's a little shorter than we're used to. There's a number of things uh, not used, like this is a rather large sprue not being used, or a large amount of that sprue is this. Again, they were starting to pick up speed with their 251s when this was released, so. So this looks to be an engine, and some real simple flooring on the, the lower hull tub. Here's the photo etch upgrade stuff for the, the lower hull. There's the suspension elements for the front, like truck wheels. Pretty simple wheel and, and stuff assembly going on here. Nothing terribly complicated, mostly two halves. Uh, here's the driver stuff for the the front. There's multiple seat options. I know there's some photo etch stuff, probably some just standard plastic thing. Here you go. So you've got your little old school 80s lawn chair wicker kind of weaving, which is brass, and then that goes onto the plastic piece. There's the actual dashboard. So here you've got floor, driver compartment, dashboard going on to a pretty much completed suspension by step seven. Now these are the hull sides, which I hear a lot of people say are sort of the dangerous parts. These are perhaps ammo containers, not real sure what that is yet. Some little fiddly photo edge brackets there. But here's a rather important step, so you've got these sides going into here, and then here's your upper hull, and there's the two types, the early and the late. I think the main difference is you've got like a two-piece opening hood, and then here you've got like a one. So radio going in, something on the lower rear, and then here's your main marrying of the upper with lower, which is where I've seen some stuff go wrong. Fire extinguishers and stuff in the rear doors. And then here's your little fenders with some tools, and these little storage locker things on the side. That's step 13. Still going, because now we basically got a 251D. Here's a little MG on the back. Here they're telling you about the tracks. Now we start the gun, so it's got this big conical shaped mount. I don't know how tiny these little parts are, but it looks pretty intense, like any kind of gun assembly would be. Actually a little smaller, because I built the, the gun for my stoke last night. That didn't seem to have parts that small. Okay, so 16, a lot of steps in this thing. Yeah, 
I'm breaking everything. Okay. Okay, so those were ammo boxes, and now you've got... Or these are, but these look just like them. And then you've got belts coming out of them, feeding into the gun, which seems like it would be a very complex thing to do. At least to get right. Then you've got three of these actual guns, so you've got the main bit here and the barrels. You've also got photo etch for the tips of the guns. That seems a little complicated, but I bet you it looks really sweet when it's done. That's step 20. Step 21. Uh, there's a, what looks like a scope. Putting some final bits in the top of that gun assembly. There, there it is finished. That's quite the thing. It looks like a Star Wars turret. And then you're mounting it down into the 251. Step 22. Finally. Step 23. We've got an antenna, some people, driver. Uh, and then these things here, which I imagine go around and protect the gun. There's some call-outs for the construction of the figure set. That's step 24. And that is it. They've got two markings. Doesn't really say anything about them other than numbers. Um, so you've got Dunkle Galvin. This looks like Tritonal. This has this interesting thing of having a the Balkan Kreutz only be a, an outline, and it intersects with the 4-2. It's kind of strange look. So the first thing I'll look at is the Easy Track, which I have never used. The precursor to Magic Track, these are very small. <laughs> They're actually hard to differentiate from each other in there. They're just little things, and then this bit holds them together, kind of like Sherman pins by the look of it. That will be interesting. That's some small stuff. The rest of the dragon card in there. Let's see what we have here. We have soft plastic uniforms, which aren't labeled as DS but are very similar, just a gray version of that. So we've got a folded up shirt and a shirt and some boots. There's photo etch for the bottom, with the lower hull pieces. There's a lot of decals. You can pretty much number it anything you want by the look of that. Over here, some more tiny photo etch fret. Here we have some itty bitty, I can't even tell what that's supposed to be. These little brass things. There's also some little silver things in there. This could be the gun tips by the look of it. I only see two of them, and there should be three of them. With indicators. The mirror stickers, more decals, another little photo etch thing, some clear parts, more markings for license plates, I believe, and then a sheet of divisional markings. It's kind of a lot of stuff. Then there is the DS figures, which come with most of these older 251s. They're kind of squishy, in case you're not familiar with DS. They are soft plastic. They look pretty crisp for squishy plastic. His hand looks alright. Let me see this guy's head. That's not bad. So these are presumably squishy so you can jam them into the seat or something. Then I'll jump right to the figure set that comes with it, for whatever reason, in orange box fashion. It comes with this Achtung Yabo uh, figure set, which is kind of common and kind of cheap. 
but we'll look at it anyway. So there's their heads. Doesn't look bad. I'm not really a figure guy on account of them being hard to paint and all. I might be at some point, but right now I'm not. So these in this figure set they're essentially just looking out for ground attack aircraft. So sprues. These are going to be primarily probably just 251D sprues. The upper hull, now this would be the version with the two separate pieces that open left and right for the hood, or whatever you call it in whatever country you live in. Texture is very fine, but there it's not totally smooth. The lines and stuff, they're crisp, they're good enough for what I'm used to. That looks good to me. Here we've got these storage areas that go on the side. One thing I check on these is is when they have sharp edges, just how tight that corner is. Like, there's kind of a sweet spot of it's sharp enough, but has a little bit of a bevel to it. Uh, these small parts are pretty good. I don't know if I like the clamps on there. But seeing as this dates from the mid-2000s, it's going to have slightly simplified tools. Imagine you can pose these open, and you've got hinge detail there. These parts are very nice. Got some MP40s. There's the fenders. That seems very good. Here we have, I'm not entirely sure what all I'm looking at here, these just look like stowage boxes. Oh, these are bench seats right here. That's pretty cool. The wood grain on there is subtle. Don't know if it reads like wood necessarily, but it looks pretty good. And that's nice. So this must just be interior 251 stuff. Here we have an MG42. Fire extinguisher, more bench seats. So this is the other upper hull piece. Label then here is two five one slash two two. It looks pretty much the same detail-wise as the other one. It just has these two larger hinges back here instead of four there. We have another figure in here. Well, most of them anyway. I see legs and legs and arms but that's all I see these are a little smooth but maybe they're supposed to be just sheet metal or something there's your hood or again whatever you call it that's very clean right there Pretty impressive. We've got two of these. This is labeled specifically for this guy. 25121. Very small parts on there. 
There's your ammo belts, the main parts of the guns. Some very fiddly stuff on there. It's been sitting on a shelf somewhere for 10 years, so it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with any of this. It's got a lot of these knockout marks, so it's pretty modern style. This one is labeled as just standard 251. There's the engine. And just interior stuff, I'm going to assume that's the steering wheel. Just a styrene version of a width indicator. mount, there's an MG34. Yeah, all this stuff looks a little bit spongier than you would see on like a brand new kit, but not much, just a little bit. And I'm just being nitpicky, but you can just tell sometimes. Here I've got a little bent piece, which is the main mount for that gun. I'm just going to not touch it right away. Oops, and this guy here too. These pieces are just very large. Sitting in a box for a long time. You've got some real small parts. This is also specific to the, the 21 variant. So this is primarily the gun mount assembly. It looks like an antenna. Wall looks very nice. Lots of little tiny bits that I couldn't possibly understand what are until they're on something. So we then have two of these. So here is another version of tracks. So we have an option for two types of tracks in here. And then this is basically the same kind of track assembly anyway. The larger pieces go to the little smaller piece, the pad. No, no, the other ones are quite a bit different, actually. I think the other ones connected each piece, like you'd have them here, 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 and then they connected on the outside, it looked like anyway. Not sure. But they are fiddly. For comparison, the early Panzer IV tracks are about that wide, so. But those are the, the other track option. Here's the front wheels of the truck part, which looks like it's in two halves. One half already having the hub detail in it. There's your sprockets, and then your wheels. Two types mainly, they look pretty okay. And again, we have two of these, except one sprue doesn't have this. This is labeled as standard 251. If you're going to have a bunch of probably standard suspension stuff, here's your swing arms. There's a 98K by the look of it. Jerry cans, the seat with the detail already in the back, some more small arms. Pretty crisp for its age. And that's probably the floor of the uh, driver's area. We've got the this little guy, which is just seats. Which I'm guessing do not have that detail in it yet, and you would need to put the PE version. So there's one with it in there, there's one without it in there.
Here's our little hull tub, which I'm always shocked by how thin they are on a 251. They are very, very small. Detail seems pretty good. Again, maybe not quite up to what I'm used to, but pretty close. And when I say what I'm used to, I mean just current dragon molding. Just a little bit softer than that. Oh, and this last screw, which I had sitting somewhere else. Uh, here's your hull sides. They seem a little bland, but that's all right. Um, there's a few marks on the inside, but I think you put stuff over them. There's a lot right there. Hopefully you don't see that too much. Is that the dashboard? Yeah. You would never see that other side of it. It's a little MG shield. An axe with a really crappy clamp. I don't care for that at all. Some more benches. Again, with nice wood grain on it. Interesting. So it seems like this is the exact same sprue I had earlier, just without this stuff attached to it. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with what's in here. I really like these 251 kits. They come with so much stuff. I'm really not going to know until I just jump in and build one of them if I really like them, but uh, it's just a lot going on with them, and I just slowly keep getting pulled towards 251s. I don't want to. I used to hate them uh, before I knew much about them, and this, the longer I'm into this stuff, the more I like them. They're sort of... They're attractive to me. Uh, but there's a lot in here... Uh, and you can get this thing pretty cheap. I think I got this for like maybe 15 bucks at a, at a like an armor modeler's club thing here. So uh, that's not bad. So it's cheap, it's a round, and it is a very full kit. Now the 251 drilling from AFV Club has the larger guns. The, um, what is it? It's like the the 20s versus the 15s. So... And I've heard that's more accurate in other ways, but this thing is a lot cheaper.